Welcome back to the Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Look how big he's getting, guys. <laughs> Say hello. He's doing very good, by the way, for everybody that was wondering. I haven't done an update in a little bit and been behind on my videos, but uh, let's get back to work here. All right, little buddy. You're watching YouTube Ranchworks and DIY, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we kind of got a mix of a diff two different playlists I always do. Uh, hidden bike gems, and I always like to pick up an abandoned bike and make like a full restoration. I did not get a time machine to go back to 1996. Surprise, surprise. This is, I mean, immaculate. A time capsule of a bike. Only one example I have is a previous black SR600 Cannondale I did. This one, I mean, on the shifters up here, where the molding of the grips actually come together, it's still there. I mean, that wears off with your hand wheels like immediately on these older cell shifters. And to be honest, uh, at this point, finding them with new, sh like new shifter grips is, is like finding hen's teeth. Uh, it's not going to happen. Just to give you a bit of an idea of what we're working with here. I mean, to be honest, I think these, these lug carbon fiber frames, they get kind of a bad like knock for coming apart. You can find them I and it's pretty easy to tell. The paint will be fading. There's going to be a delamination in between the epoxy lug and the epoxy carbon section there at the joint. So this one, beautiful frame still. The paint is gorgeous. There's no delamination in between any of the lug joints here. This is why, you know, I think of picking up a little vintage carpet frame like this, something that's been sitting forever. I got this from original owners and I mean, I'm calling it abandoned because literally they just, they got a bike shop to like tune it up uh, after they bought it and it had been sitting for years. They put this bar tape on and they put on, new tires basically. That's all that I know they did to, to actually change anything up on the bike. To be honest, one of my favorite things about this is the vintage group set. Not just the shifters are they hard to find, but RSX in general, underrated. Not many people know about it. It is much older like we're talking about, you know. This RSX was actually introduced in 1995. So one cool thing about this, we'll start off with the, the actual drivetrain, the crank set. This is like a subcompact, technically. Compact nowadays is a 5034 double crank set. And this one's actually a 466626. So like Climber City right here, man. Uh, some of my favorite bikes, man, you know, you wanna get into biking seriously, finding a triple, having it set up properly, you're gonna be so much happier than struggling on a double or spending extra money. Uh, if you have a normal double crank set, it's going to come with a short cage rear derailleur. This one's a long cage. You see the pulley here. The two pulleys are very far apart. So if you would have to like adapt all that over, you don't have to do that with this. And even if you hate the triple, you can already swap to a double easily and still keep your rear derailleur for a big cassette. These, unlike some of the cheaper stuff you find nowadays, on um, like, you know, maybe your budget bikes that would be in this range, I would expect them to have non-removable chain rings. They might even just be like grafted on as one piece. All that stuff is such trash, you don't want to mess with it. If you did want to change to a double, you could even still use this crank set by just pulling these chain rings out. It's no different than the new stuff they have now. Basically, this is a CFR3. This started out as the third best one they sold. This one is, they never had Shimano no, I'm sorry. They never had Shimano Tiagra uh, at this point back in the day. Shimano Tiagra didn't come out until 9 speed. But this was one step below Shimano RX100 or Shimano 105. Those are pretty much right on the same level there. I would compare this to a modern day Tiagra. The one thing I do think, Tiagra had a lot of failures. So up until their last 10 speed evolution, they had a lot of issues. This really isn't that bad. Um, unlike, I mean, like every shifter, the shifters will have hardened grease in there. I'm actually gonna pull these completely off the bike, take the housings off, take the, all the shift cables out both sides, and I'm gonna soak them. 
hardcore gonna soak them in dish hot dish soap. So I have a whole process on relubricating the shifters and everything. You can check out that video here. As far as the re remaining part of the drivetrain, I'm gonna keep the cranks. I'm gonna keep this uh, front derailleur. I'm gonna keep even the seven speed drivetrain. One cool thing you can do with these wheels, you can always upgrade these vintage wheels from just a seven speed cassette to an eight, nine, or 10 speed by changing out the free hub on the back here. I have a video on that you can check out as well. But overall, this whole bike comes with Tiger, uh, I'm sorry, unlike like a lot of the cheaper bikes out now, like your Trek 1000s, everything basically, Cannondale does it. All kinds of new high Specialized does it. They use like off-brain brakes. This one, Shimano RSX brakes, both front and rear. For the hubs, there's no Alex wheels from China that could be pretty good or you need to take to a bike shop and get them all trued and likely have the bearings repacked because they're just trashed in a factory. Now, granted, like I said, these aren't the highest end Shimano wheels, but they're still sealed. They're still very high quality hubs, front and rear. And not only that, but they're laced to some sick. I love stuff like this, man. These are gold. I wish it popped much better in my light here. These are by like an Italian company, I think. I'm not really sure how to pronounce their name. I think it's Rigida, R-I-G-I-D-A. These are their deep DP18 Titan Deep V wheels. And, and you can tell they're very deep V. I mean, there's almost no wear on this brake tracks besides like some odd little pieces of, I'm guessing it probably needs the actual rubber units of the brakes replaced. I might scuff them with a little sandpaper, see if they soften up. And if they squeal on a ride, I'll just get a new brake back. That's not a big deal. But, um. One thing I would recommend, dude, these brakes are actually very nice. My trainer bike, I stole them off for another bike I ended up selling, uh, a Vitus Carbone. So to replace them, I put these RSX brakes on there. And instead of these molded rubber pads that are just one bolt units, you have to replace the whole thing and like reset your pad angle and all that. I'm gonna probably, if I do have to replace them, I'm gonna put cartridge units in here and you can just slide new pads in and out. Um, nice thing too, if you're commuting on a bike like this, you get all weather pads for like when it turns really bad weather and just, you know, it's just one little tiny screw right here boop, in and out. So that's a good option to pick up because these brakes, they're probably like, I would imagine around Tiagra level, level of the newer version. I'm going to actually take them off and get the weight so you could see what they weigh and look like here. But uh, I'm going to guess that they compare to like some pretty decent newer brakes. And you know, these are still from 1995, 1996. So all of this all together, my thoughts right off the bat, I love the fact that everything is still competitive today. Being a seven speed bike, the chain and the gears and the chain rings, the cogs on the rear cassette, all of this, they're thicker, so it's gonna last longer. That's another big favorite of mine. Parts are dirt cheap. I mean, can't complain about that. You want a huge cassette on the back, no big deal. They have eight speed cassettes for cheap. 1132 tooth is super common on eight speed mountain bikes. In fact, people will pull them off to put even bigger ones on. You can just take your very front cog off. So it's 1132, make it a 1232, slides right on there. Now you got a seven speed cassette, the spacing in between the same. The spacing between the two is the same. So that's pretty much, uh, I don't wanna, you know, I feel like I've done a lot of rambling uh, and cool talking about the bike. I did not want to forget this one thing actually though, the CFR3 I did mention was their lowest one. This is aimed at like more of your people like me, you know, maybe you want to do competitive but you're not trying to go pro, you're on a budget but you do ride hard. This is a better angle on the seat tube, I'm sorry, on the head tube and on the seat tube. It gives you like more of an upright geometry. It's hard to like explain but on the effective top tubing here, for the CFR2 and the CFR1, it is much more aggressive and downward to where you would be riding in the drops, more of a racer style bike. And those also came with, the CFR2 came with Shimano 105 and the CFR1 came with what was then Shimano 600. That's now Shimano Ultegra. That was eight speed back then. So uh, believe it or not, there was like a pound in some points difference in between the bikes. And as it is right now, the bike is 24 pounds, 24.1 pounds, something like that. And that is with the cages and these straps, you know, uh, I left the pedals on. So um, for what it is, not terrible. We're gonna make some changes to it. Give it a little bit like 
more of its actual vibe to it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of these tires, to be honest. So I have a whole big different direction we're going to be going. Please stay tuned for part two, guys. We're almost at 500 subscribers. I just recently hit 150,000. If you like cars, I also have a Toyota Corolla in my garage that I'm going to be doing an engine rebuild on. That's a little bit of a sneak peek. I haven't actually announced that yet. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. Bye.